Download our app available from the App Store and Play Store. Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues. I'm Roshni Dhar. Let's look at today's daily bulletin. While responding to the request of students across the country for postponing the NEET PG examination 2023, the Union Health Minister Mansur Mandaviya informed the Lok Sabha that since exam date was announced around five months ago, the students should not face any problem to prepare for the exam. Further, the Health Minister pointed out that in order to ensure that none of the students across India suffers due to eligibility criteria, the government has extended the cut-off date for completing MBBS internship till 11th of August. More than 250 doctors from Uttar Pradesh have now come under the radar of the State Health Department for not rejoining their duties after taking a sabbatical for finishing a specialization course. Already taking cognizance of the issue, the Health Department has prepared a list of such doctors and soon notices will be issued to them in this regard. In case those doctors fail to submit explanation for their unauthorized absence or resume their duties, they will face disciplinary action. Long-term exposure to air pollution raises the risk of depression according to a pair of new studies published in the JAMA Network of Scientific Journals. A study published in JAMA Network Open found that long-term exposure to elevated levels of air pollution increases the risk of late-onset depression among the elderly. The other study published in JAMA Psychiatry found that long-term exposure to even low levels of air pollutants was associated with increased incidence of depression and anxiety. Air pollution has long been linked to cardiovascular and respiratory diseases. The new studies add to a growing body of evidence that air pollution also affects mental health. For the study of the effects of air pollution on elderly Americans, researchers from Harvard and Emory University examined the data of nearly 9 million people on Medicare, the US government health insurance scheme for those aged over 64. More than 1.52 million of them were diagnosed with depression during the study period of 2005 to 2016, according to Medicare claims. The Humble Egg is a powerhouse of nutrition, offering large doses of protein and B-complex vitamins. Plus, it has a very few calories and can be cooked in a multitude of ways. A single egg provides 186 mg of cholesterol, which is more than a half of the maximum recommended daily intake for healthy people. This brings up the question, how many eggs can you safely eat each day? A recent study published in Nutrients explored how egg consumption affects one's heart health and the paper's authors reported a striking finding. The study suggests eating 1-3 to three eggs a week is associated with a 60% lower risk of developing cardiovascular disease. In fact, the study found an even lower risk of developing cardiovascular disease, 75% for those eating 4 to 7 eggs a week. However, they only found a protective role in eating 1 to 3 eggs a week after considering social demographic, lifestyle and clinical factors. The authors concluded that egg consumption may have a protective role against cardiovascular disease when included in healthy diet with low consumption of saturated fatty acids. Researchers have identified a compound that inhibits the body's own methyltransferase MTR1, thereby limiting the replication of influenza viruses. The compound proved effective in lung tissue preparations and mouse studies and showed synergistic effects with already approved influenza drugs. In order to distinguish foreign from its own nucleic acids, the cell uses a kind of labeling system. Own RNA, for example, is stacked with a molecular cap that identifies it as non-hazardous. This enables the immune system to react specifically to threats. The molecular cap is a methylated nucleoside, a small molecule attached to the end of the RNA chain. Tagged in this way, the RNA does not trigger an immune response. However, if there is RNA in the cell that lacks the cap structure, it is recognized by the immune receptor RIG1 and the immune system is alerted. To escape this, influenza viruses steal the molecular cap from cellular RNA molecules and transfer it to their own RNA. This process is called cap snatching. Influenza requires cellular enzyme for replication. 
In a large-scale nationwide study, investigators from Sadar Sinai Cancer have confirmed that rates of pancreatic cancer are rising and are rising faster among younger women, particularly black women, than among men of the same. The pancreas, located just behind the stomach, secretes enzymes and hormones that help the body digest food and process sugars. Pancreatic cancer has the highest mortality rate of all major cancers, accounting for 3% of all cancer deaths in the U.S., and is more common among men than women. In this study, investigators combed data from the National Program of Cancer Registries NCPR database, which represents approximately 64.5% of the US population on patients diagnosed with pancreatic cancer between 2001 and 2018. Scientists identified three children with the condition, two siblings and an unrelated child. The three children all had issues with motor coordination and speech, and one child had abnormalities in the cerebellum. Additionally, the children all had mutations in both copies of the ATG4D gene. ATG4D aids in the cellular housekeeping process called autophagy, which cells use to break down and recycle damaged proteins and other defective pieces of the cell to stay healthy. Autophagy is a fundamental process used by cells throughout the body, but neurons are particularly dependent on autophagy for survival. Well, little is known about how ATG4D contributes to healthy neurons. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.